going on everybody well today we're doing the uh rupture comparison um this is the gapra it's normal wheels and tires are the one nine ruptures here that are currently not mounted on it um they're awesome uh, so far i think they're probably the best tire that i've run on this thing um recently i tried running two two ruptures on it uh, and i had absolutely no luck at all uh, they had pretty much garbage for this particular rig anyways um so decided i'd try to do a little modification and uh did a little cut and shut job and i actually shortened them about a half an inch so now i've got they're still full two two rupture width but now they're only 5.1 or so inches tall so uh they did surprisingly well uh, the other day when I tested them out for the first time and that kind of got me thinking I should probably go ahead and do a full-blown head-to-head comparison between the one nines and my modified two twos and see how they actually hold up um, the one nines are on some deep dish Enjora bead locks um, I believe I've got a brass clamp ring inside of it and then uh, some homemade dual stage foam inserts and then on the two twos they're on uh, stock bomber plastic bead locks I have weighted the clamp ring on those as well and then these are the stock uh, single stage open cell foams that came with the two two ruptures but i've uh, cut them down a good bit so both sets are pretty soft got good compression um yeah so we're gonna hit a few different uh, challenging lines see how they kind of stack up against each other and um yeah see how well i did with this little experiment here um definitely got some uh smaller shoes to fill i guess since the one nines are pretty much the gold standard i'm trying to compare the two twos up against but still got dry conditions out here in the pit today. I think this is probably the last day for said dry conditions. So I wanted to go ahead and uh, get this out of the way before everything turns back to mud. So we're going to give these things a rip and uh, see how they stack up. So it is a little windy today. So we may end up having some windy audio happening at certain points but i'm not exactly sure the best way to go about uh the video on this thing i don't really want to swap tires back and forth after each obstacle that's a lot of tire swapping so i think i may run everything uh, in shorter clips possibly with each tire and then uh, when I go back and edit the video, I may do, you know, this obstacle with this tire and then that same obstacle with the other tire kind of back to back. And that might be the easiest way to go about it. Hopefully I can get everything to match up pretty well. I'm not going to promise that the camera angles will be the exact same, but we should be able to keep them relatively close. 
But the goal here is to uh, slow crawl everything as much as possible because I'm looking for total grip. You go down to a shorter tire you get hung up more often so it is one thing to keep in mind but can't really take that away from the tires that's more so me picking the wrong line for the size tire that I got
actually starting to dig down into uh, some mud with these ones. That's what I get for trying to take the hardest line over here, even though the big tires didn't didn't make that particular line. Probably pay more attention to the front tire placement instead of watching these back tires closest to the camera. may have just broken something. Looks like my rear axle's pointed down more than normal. I need to check that out. Well, it definitely looks like I've stretched out a couple rod ends, but they seem like they're gonna hopefully hold up, so we'll continue on. Definitely time to replace some rod ends for sure. I definitely didn't set that back down in the same spot. Set it back down right where it was getting hung up on the diff, but we got out of it. too far over to the driver's side there. That doesn't happen very often.
Well, it looks like I'm probably going to have to leave the camera right here because of where the sun's shining and where the shadows are. If I put it in its normal spot, I'm pretty much going to be blinded over here. So we're just going to have to make do with this particular view. God. Oh, it climbed back out of it. We got lucky. I'll say I dropped off on the rear right too far and just about like I'm going to do now. I get hung up on the knuckle. Oh, got more side bite than I remember having. I'm really surprised we didn't get hung up real bad right there. There it is. It'll be interesting to see. Whoa. See how far I can slide down the hill. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see those uh, two climbs back to back. So it's been probably 45 minutes to an hour since I ran it with the two twos. Uh, so they feel pretty close to the same uh, minus ground clearance and steering knuckle clearance. But grip wise, they seem to seem to be pretty comparable. So think if I can manage to get each one of these clips lined up back to back with a at least somewhat similar camera view uh, hopefully that will give give a better idea on how they're doing compared to each other Not sure if the camera's gonna stay here or not. It's a pretty steep side hill.
side. Let's we'll see if I can uh, get it back. Oh yeah. Keep this thing in the right groove this time. As you follow the exact line, it's got it, no problem. Yet again, hopefully this camera stays where it's at because this is one hell of a side hill to set this thing on. hung up on that rear rear axle there
right there. in it. There you go. I'm not quite in the groove, but I'm real close to it, so hopefully it'll ride it out. May as well try to take this funky groove that the two twos took just to see. If not, I think I can walk it back where it needs to be. the tires that was me trying to do something stupid wow I can't believe it walked right back up that funky line Try to get the rears back over here where they belong. There we go. And bam, just like that. Again, it'll be interesting to see these side by side, you know, back to back, not side by side. Uh, you know, even though I tried to do some funky shit there and take a goofy line, uh, once I got back on where it needed to be, it walked right up it. Seem to be just as stable coming down. Maybe even a little more stable. Not too shabby.
Okay, I think I need to just set the camera down here. Make it a little bit easier to move around and see my tire placement this way. really got to stretch this thing out in a certain spot to get that right front tire to grab. You can get it with wheel speed, but to get it to claw its way up there, you, you've got to hit it perfect. Could potentially end up being a spot where the uh, one nines could pull ahead in this little head to head competition here. on the last one so i'm going to leave the camera here until it makes it up to that certain point and then i'll pick it up if it makes it up there
like I believe I said earlier when I was running said two twos, that was going to be the spot where these ones could really pull ahead, and they did. It's really weird how, you know, you would figure a bigger tire would give you a little bit more reach, because it's, it's this little nub right here that you've got to reach up and grab the top of while your back tire on the opposite side is hitting that little nub right there so i don't know in my mind i guess that should be easier with bigger tires but apparently not and those two twos actually have a good bit more compression than these one nines do just because i've got dual stage foams in these and the uh the two twos have got a single stage open cell so you'd figure they'd be able to reach up and latch on to something easier but not the case some wood obstacles as well been a while since uh since i've ran a couple of these climbs here this was the first ever obstacle that i put together up here in the pit a couple years back There's, to, it doesn't look like nothing on camera. I mean, it's definitely not the hardest thing in the world here, but it's a pretty good little off camber spot to get up through the notch here. And if you don't have good tire placement and weight balance and some sticky tires, you'll slide right off of that thing. Back before I started building obstacles, I used to climb up to that notch. And uh, that was as far as you could go, obviously, at that point. I was like, man, I need to get away down from there. Got an old slide. Initially, it was just a slide. And then uh, figured, oh, I may as well make this a two-way situation screwed a bunch of wood scraps to it and now it's a two-way street and we're back to the tree obstacles all right well I, don't know. I keep forgetting that i'm planning on alternating between the one nines and the two twos back to back for me, I ran all these obstacles with one tire and then ran them all with the other tire. Sure, you can probably tell the difference in the shadows, but I keep forgetting that. So every time I mention something about how the tire, other tire ran earlier today, that's why. here again it's not the most difficult climb around but you've definitely got to have your your setup right to be able to get up here what where the sun is in the sky there's really not too 
too good of a spot here to get a real good view without getting some flare from the sun. That moss on the tree really uh, adds a little bit of slip to the situation. So you gotta try to get most of your grip from the right side. something that I haven't been able to accomplish with anything yet but I may as well give it a shot since uh, it's the first time I've been here for a while I'd really like to be able to get up in the notch of that tree yet again it doesn't look like much but it is steep and off camber is all get out one of these days i will make it up into that notch and once i do then i'll uh work on trimming some out on the other side and uh, make a way off of this thing but until i can successfully get up in the notch with something uh, there's really no reason I'm gonna see if I can find a good spot to set the camera down here. That way I can catch this thing when it falls. So even though I don't see this climbing the notch, I tried it with the other tires, so I may as well try it with these ones too. Hopefully the camera will stay, and hopefully I can stay out of the way. But I've got it set so far back behind me in a tree, it's going to be hard to tell where I'm at in the viewfinder here. But we're going to give this thing a shot. in the air tires are folding over definitely not the right setup for this
was worth a shot. Not sure if that's where I set the camera before, but that's where it is now. Stay. Don't fall. Help a brother out. do one more climb here it's on the other side of the same tree and uh, basically go up one side and uh, pull a 180 and then go back down the other side As far as that side of the tree over there trying to climb up into the notch, I could very easily just, you know, screw up a little block of scrap wood and uh, make that climb a little bit easier. Uh, give something for the bottom tire to grab a hold of instead of sliding down and lifting the front up but there's something about climbing a naturally screwed up leaning tree i don't know if it's just me but there's something about climbs like this even though they're not the most challenging or the most technical there's just something about it that's cool like nature 100 percent did this and the fact that i can crawl it with my tiny little truck it's just cool and here's where that extra ground clearance with the two twos definitely definitely helps
is getting hung up on every little piece of bark on the way up. Just picked the wrong time of day to come out here and do this. I really don't like having all the, all my shadows and stuff in here and it's keeping me from getting the better angles because of where the sun's at. Those are the little things that kind of aggravate me, especially while I'm editing a video. It's really hard to tell. Uh, these tires are very comparable in performance now. Um, I've got, still have a full size set of 2 2 ruptures. Uh, maybe I'll have to do a comparison with those in another video. And, uh, That'll show a huge difference in performance for sure. But I'd say they're they're pretty close to even with the one nines now. Um, each one of them has their own pros and cons in comparison to the other. But all in all, doing the cut and shut with the two two ruptures definitely uh, definitely helped out in the performance department. That's for sure. Well, all in all, I'd say that uh, this whole operation and experiment here was a success. Um, basically, I just I just really wanted to see if I could really do anything with the two two ruptures. I've had awesome results with the one nines. I've had absolutely zero complaints with them things from day one. Um, and I figured two twos would be just as good, especially on this particular rig. It's got the capabilities of running two twos. It's a very capable rig. It's got the clearance for it. And, uh, I, I had really high hopes when I got those and they let me down something serious. I don't know if you have seen that video or not but it's probably i don't know four videos prior to this one somewhere in that area if you go look for it you'll see the title and it'll be obvious but it was a huge disappointment and uh i thought that after running that and seeing how poorly they did on this rig i thought for sure that they were going to be useless as a crawling tire you know i've got like the race on the bomber axles and stuff like that you know more go fast trucks that i could use them on so not a complete loss but that's not why i got them um so i figured eventually I'm, i would like to do my own cut and shut crawlers uh, but i like those tires so much it's just hard for me to get over that first hurdle of cutting into a good tire uh so i was like hey i've got two sets of two two ruptures that aren't doing me a whole lot of good let's see if i can uh shorten them a little bit and that'll be a good trial run for uh, the cut and shut experience so i took about a half inch out of these two twos and uh so far the glue job is holding together very well i haven't seen any splits or anything so that's a huge plus in itself and then uh the performance side of it you know i'm blown away with 
how how much of an increase in performance there was in just taking out a half inch of height. They're still ridiculously wide, and I didn't figure that uh, they was gonna do that well on the rocks being that wide because you're spreading out you know your contact patch essentially in my mind since you're spreading it out so wide i mean these tires are almost double the width of the one nines so i figured i was going to lose a good bit of bite but they did very well um i, I still haven't went back and watched any of them back to back but driving one set and then driving the other set i feel like they're right on par with each other so yeah i'm very happy thoroughly impressed and uh i'm back on back on board with the two two ruptures after they've been modified so maybe here at some point down the road uh i'll bring my shorter two twos out and run them against a full size set because uh, i've still got another unaltered set so that'll be uh that'll be a more polarizing experience there to see how much of a difference in performance there is between the shorter ones and the taller ones but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it um i thank you for watching if you're still here uh, i know the last few videos have been quite lengthy and uh, i know there's not a whole lot of other people out there that are like me and just basically binge watch rc videos especially in long format so if you're still here thank you for watching very much i do appreciate it hope you enjoyed if you've got a set of two two ruptures that you're not happy with cut them things down glue them back together and uh i've got to imagine you're going to be thoroughly impressed as well anyways i hope y'all have a good one we'll catch you in the next one later